Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to be ranking even more cursed chemicals. So let's get started. The first chemical here is thiorubrine B. This is a 1,2 dithiene, and this is a chemical that occurs in giant ragweed. The technical name for giant ram. ramweed. <laughs> The technical name for giant ragweed is Ambrosia trifidia. This plant is used in herbal medicine as an antiseptic, and it's also used to treat intestinal worms and fever. Thyrubrine B has also shown light-mediated activity against HIV-1. However, this paper was published a long time ago, and we currently have more effective treatments against HIV. Thyrubrine B has this really weird structure. This is like a cursed benzene analog. It's also got three alkynes and a double bond. So this is a really cursed one. I think this can go right into S tier, which is appropriate because it has sulfur in it. Next, we have Cicutoxin. Cicutoxin is this crazy diene triene. Cicutoxin is this crazy super conjugated molecule. This is literally just one linear chain of carbon, but it's got two triple bonds and three double bonds all in a row. Now you might think that this is pretty innocuous, but this is a naturally occurring poison which is present in several plants, such as water hemlock. It causes death by respiratory paralysis resulting from disruption of the central nervous system. It's a potent, non-competitive antagonist of the GABA receptor. In humans, this rapidly produces symptoms of nausea, emesis, and abdominal pain, typically within 60 minutes of ingestion. This can lead to tremors, seizures, and death. In fact, the LD50 in mice is only 9 mg per kilogram. This is a really sketchy molecule, and based on its structure alone, you might not think it's too bad. It's just a long carbon chain. But man, I tell you, having this many conjugated bonds in a row is pretty sketchy. This is pretty cursed, but compared to some of the other ones on here, I don't think it's too bad. Why don't we put it in C tier? You know why. You know exactly why. Next, we have this crazy molecule, which I like to refer to as Hoy's Witchcraft. This molecule looks like it couldn't exist or it shouldn't exist. However, you probably know very well that we do not cover hypothetical molecules on this channel. Hypothetical molecules can be covered on a hypothetical channel. This is a real channel, so we only talk about real molecules. This is a somewhat obscure chemical that's known as a tetrine. There's one, two, three, four triple bonds. A triple bond is an alkyne. There's four of them. It's a tetrine. There's two dienes. And there's this reaction that's been really pioneered by Thomas Hoy's group called the hexadehydrodealzalder reaction where a triene is able to do a Diels-Alder reaction, and they form this thing called a benzyne, and benzynes are highly reactive. Now, we were doing some research, and we wanted to try reproducing this chemistry just to see if we could take the product and do some stuff with it, and so we actually prepared this one, and it turns out that this chemical is even stable enough to see by GCMS, which is really surprising given its cursed structure. You probably wouldn't think that it's volatile. Now, the cool thing that they do in this work is they use this as a way to template these double bonds to get closer, it's kind of like that meme where it's like, now kiss. And then afterwards, they use rainy nickel and they just get rid of the sulfur. So this is a really cool reaction, relatively straightforward, but definitely super duper cursed. We have this orthoester with two sulfur species, a sulfur alkyne, another alkyne, and then benzene rings. This thing is extremely cursed. This is going to go right into S tier. Hey, did anybody notice how there's sulfur in that too? Hypoglycin! Hypoglycin A is a naturally occurring amino acid derivative found in the unripened fruit of the ackee tree. This is one which is toxic if it's ingested, and it's the agent that causes Jamaican vomiting sickness. Now, the really cool thing about this is hypoglycin A is actually a protoxin. So similar to how there's prodrugs that are converted to drugs in the body, this is a protoxin. That means that this molecule itself isn't a toxin, but it's broken down to toxic products when it's ingested. So there's this enzyme called the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex, and this normally converts leucine, isoleucine, or valine into acetyl-CoA derivatives. However, this is converted into hypoglycin-CoA, and that's the really toxic compound. So this is a protoxin. Overall, I don't think the structure's too bad. We do have an exocyclic double bond connected to a cyclopropane. That's pretty bad, but I don't think it's too, too bad. I think we could probably put this one right into B tier. Okay, next we have varicin. Varicin looks a little bit like other phenethylamines, although this is a organosulfur-containing derivative where we have a pentasulfide, which is pretty insane. This has been found in sac-like marine invertebrate filter feeders from the polycytor genus. This contains this unusual pentathiapin ring, which is a pentasulfide, and this reacts with DNA. And as a result, varicin and synthetic analogs have been investigated as possible agents with antimicrobial and antitumor properties. This one's pretty wild because it's got a pentasulfide. I think this one can also go right into S tier. 
Here we have dicyanoacetylene. This is a really crazy chemical. You might not think it's that interesting. It's got a triple bond, single bond, triple bond, single bond, triple bond. This chemical is a clear liquid at room temperature, but it can easily explode into elemental carbon and nitrogen. When this chemical burns in pure oxygen, it has an insanely high flame temperature. In fact, it's the hottest known flame in oxygen. It burns at 4,990 degrees Celsius. However, if you burn it in ozone, it burns even hotter at 5,730 degrees Celsius. This is absolutely wild. I'd also like to know, hey, who decided to fill a container with ozone and put this highly explosive compound in it? I think if I was supervising someone and they proposed that, I would definitely be having a conversation with them. So the way that dicyanoacetylene is prepared is by passing nitrogen gas over a sample of graphite heated to temperatures in the range of 2,500 degrees Celsius. Solid dicyanoacetylene has also been detected in the atmosphere of Titan by infrared spectroscopy, which I thought was really cool. So this one's somewhat cursed. I mean, in terms of like normal organic chemistry, if you had that as a synthetic building block, you'd definitely be turning heads. I think it's not too bad. I think we can probably put it in the same tier as Situtoxin. Next, we have Sintin. This is actually a rocket fuel, and it was used by the Soviet Union for the Soyuz U-2 rocket from 1982 until 1995. After the USSR was dissolved, the production of this fuel was halted due to the expense of its synthesis. I mean, just look at this. This has three cyclopropane rings. This is absolutely wild. The last rocket with this launched on September 3rd, 1995, eight days before I was born. This is the last rocket fueled the Sintin, and who knows, maybe one day we'll fuel another rocket with Sintin. Three cyclopropanes is definitely relatively cursed. I don't think it's too bad compared to some of the other ones though. This is another C tier chemical. Next, diazo dinitrophenol. This was literally the first diazo compound ever produced, and this has been used with other materials to form priming mixtures, particularly where a high sensitivity to flame or heat is desired. So this helps initiate explosions. This has been used in initiating explosives in propellant primer devices, and it's also a substitute for lead stiffnate in what are termed green or non-toxic lead-free priming explosive compositions. This one's pretty cursed because it's de-aromatized the benzene ring. We have a C double bond N double bond N. One of them is formally positive, one of them is formally negative. The two nitro groups add to it as well. I think this is probably a B tier chemical. Definitely a little bit sketchy. Next, we have cymoxanil. Cymoxanil is a fungicide registered for use on potatoes, field tomatoes, and cane berries, which are like brambles. So that would be like raspberries, blackberries. This has activity, which is protective, curative, and it's effective against diseases across the spectrum. This is used as a fungicide, and it's especially used against downy mildew and late blight. This one's pretty cursed because it's got this like urea motif but the urea has been acylated, and then there's an oxime, which is methylated, and a cyanide. This is a pretty cursed one. I think this probably has to go into A tier. Pretty weird. Next, we have thiamethoxam. This is a really cursed looking one. This is a systemic neonicotinoid insecticide, and this works as a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor inhibitor. Here we have this weird six-membered ring with two nitrogens and one oxygen. We also have this chlorothiazole ring, then we have this interesting N-nitroimmine. An N-nitroimmine is not a common motif whatsoever, and not only is this an imine, this is a guanidine. This is a super weird one. This is getting close to S tier. It's probably a high A tier. Pretty weird to be sure. Next we have Hooperzine A. Hooperzine is an amazing chemical, and I applaud whoever named it this. I've drawn it two different ways here. The right is the two-dimensional structure, the left is a more three-dimensional structure. You can see that that six-membered ring there, which is kind of like a boat, is pointed wide while the rest of this molecule is in the plane of the page. And this has a couple double bonds, which makes it a little bit cursed. It's also a pyridinone, which can also be drawn as a hydroxypyridine. This is a naturally occurring sesquiterpene alkaloid found in the firm moss Hypu Hyperzia serrata. This one's not too bad. I think this is probably like a D or an E tier one. It's got a little bit of a cursed three-dimensional structure to it, but it's not that bad. Next, we have pentylphenyl pentaphosphalane. Pentaphenyl pentaphosphalane is a chemical that I had mentioned in one of my first videos that made the original channel start taking off. This video has been reposted on the main channel in a video titled, The Five Worst Smelling Chemicals That I Made in My PhD. This chemical smelled so bad, like the worst ever, and if you want to hear why it smelled bad or why it was something super remarkable, I'd encourage you to go check out that video. I was making this as an intermediate to Wollin's reagent, which is this really awful selenium-containing chemical. 
Woolen's reagent is even worse in terms of smell, but just look at this chemical. It's five phosphoruses in a ring. What the heck? This is S tier. Complete S tier. Five phosphoruses in a ring. What on earth is going on? Next, we have Batrachotoxin. Batrachotoxin is also known as BTX, and this is an extremely potent cardio and neurotoxic steroidal alkaloid that's been found in certain species of beetles, birds, and frogs. Its name actually comes from the Greek word batrachos, which translates to frog. This chemical has an ester motif. It's also got this parole ring. It looks like a steroidal nightmare where we have this hemiacetal linker, which is also a cyclic ether. There's this weird nitrogen oxygen containing ring pointing out of the plane of the page. This one's pretty cursed. I think this is at least a B tier, which is appropriate because it's patracotoxin. Next, we have divinyl ether. You look at this and you're probably thinking this looks a little bit like a crow. Divinyl ether is a colorless volatile liquid that's mainly been used as an inhalation anesthetic. I couldn't believe that this was an inhalation anesthetic and two vinyl groups on a single oxygen is extremely cursed looking. Apparently this was used for the first time as an anesthetic at the University of California for a hysterectomy in early 1932. This is pretty bad compared to some molecules, but compared to the ones on this list, I don't think it's too bad. I think this can go into D tier. Next, we have Arisostrobin. Arisostrobin is really gross looking because there's one oxime, two oxime, three oxime, four oxime, and here we have three oximes in a row. This is not a nice looking chemical. I can't even imagine how this was made. This is used as a rice fungicide, and it's a strobilurin type fungicide used to control leaf and panicle blast, as well as sheath blight in rice. This one I think is extremely cursed. This one can go right into S tier. Here we have Bixin. Today we're going to be mixing with Bixin because this is the most conjugated molecule I think I've ever featured on a tier list. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 double bonds in a row. Yes, I'm counting the C double bond O because they are still double bonds. Bixin is an apocarotenoid found in the seeds of Bixa orlena, also known as the Akiote tree, from which it derives its name. It's commonly extracted from seeds to form annatto, which is a natural food coloring. And the composition of annatto is roughly 5% pigments and 70 to 80% of these are Bixin. This one's just cursed in terms of having a lot of double bonds and most of them have predictable geometry. And then we have one that's just like, nope, I'm going the opposite way. So this one's kind of bad. It's, it's not too, too bad compared to some of the other ones here. I think this is like a C tier chemical in terms of being cursed. Maybe it really belongs in D tier, but I think we'll put it in C tier for now. Here we have toxoflavin. Toxoflavin looks kind of like cursed caffeine. And this is a toxin produced by a variety of bacteria, including Burkholderia gladioli. This has antibiotic properties. I think this is pretty cursed. Just look at how many nitrogens are in this molecule. There's barely any hydrogens here. There's like seven hydrogens and five nitrogens. This one's pretty cursed. I think this is like an A tier chemical overall. Pretty cursed. Next, we have this nerve agent that we actually covered in the nerve agent tier list. This one looks like one of the most cursed chemicals ever. The only protons it has are on this ethyl group over here. And it's got a nitro group, it's got a CF2, it's got a fluoroimine, which is actually an oxime, and it's a phosphoryl oxime with a PF. This thing is super duper cursed. This is extremely cursed, right into S tier with you, CO1A042. Next we have guanotoxin. This is another weird one where we have an NOP linkage. We also have this dihydroimidazole ring with an amino group and this dimethyl amino group. This chemical is a naturally occurring cyanotoxin that's been isolated from cyanobacteria. This causes excess salivation in mammals via inhibition of acetylcholine esterase. Therefore, guanotoxin also qualifies as a nerve agent. This one's pretty sketchy. This is another S tier chemical. Next, we have perfluorocubane. We made a whole video on perfluorocubane. This chemical was only just reported this year and it has the most beautiful crystals I've ever seen. I was really grateful to get permission from the authors of this paper to publish pictures of their crystals in that video. And if you haven't seen it yet, it will absolutely make your day. So make sure you check it out. Perfluorocubane is the least cursed. With all those fluorines, it is extremely based. It can go right into F tier. Next, we have rocuronium bromide. This looks like it used to be a steroid. It has the main steroid core, but then there's this quaternary group and this other weird morpholine group. There's also this ester... I'm not sure how labile it is, but I would assume normally this is a fairly labile group. This is an amino steroid non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker or muscle relaxant. And this is used in modern anesthesia to facilitate intubation by providing skeletal muscle relaxation. 
This is also commonly used for surgery and when you need mechanical ventilation. This has also been used for three lethal injections in America, and the structure of this is relatively cursed. You know, overall, it's not too bad because it's kind of just like a modified steroid core, but it is kind of weird to see a quaternary ammonium group with like this allyl coming off. I think this one's probably like a D tier. Okay, next we have this crazy arsenic containing one called melarsoprol. Melarsoprol is this arsenic containing medication used for the treatment of sleeping sickness, African trypanosomiasis, and this has a number of side effects. Common side effects include brain dysfunction, numbness, rashes, and kidney and liver problems. Now, I really like the description of the symptom brain dysfunction, as if that was clear at all. You know, I think I'm starting to have a bit of brain dysfunction just talking about this chemical. This has like melamine in it, which is kind of weird. That's probably where the mel comes from. This piece here is just melamine. And then we have arsenic in this chemical. We also have this weird two sulfur linkage. This is like dithioglycerol here. This one's extremely cursed. I think this one can also go right into S tier. But S tier is full. What are we going to do? Well, I guess we can just have it sticking halfway between S tier and A tier. That's fine with you guys, right? You don't mind if this is halfway between S tier and A tier. And if you do, you can let me know. Next, we have ethyl vinyl. This one's really weird, and I thought that this must just be some synthetic building block when I first came across it. But this is actually a GABAergic sedative and hypnotic medication first discovered by Pfizer in the 1950s. This was eventually displaced by the benzodiazepine class of drugs, but it could still be produced if a pharmaceutical company in the US wanted to produce it. This has an alkyne, it's got an alcohol, and this vinyl chloride group for a small molecule like this. It's surprising to have that much diversity. I think this is probably like a B-tier chemical overall. Next, we have a personal favorite of mine. And if you're in the fluorine chemistry community, you might have seen this before. This is what I like to call Lectica's Illegal Fluoronium. There is supposed to be an oxygen on this left one. I've just rotated it slightly so you can see a bit more of the geometry. I think the fact that I accidentally deleted that oxygen makes it a little bit more illegal. And you might be wondering to yourself, why is this illegal? And who's Thomas Lectica? So Lectica is this really amusing guy. He's quite quirky and he has a couple of interesting practices. The last time I saw Lectica at a conference, he just decided to wear a t-shirt, which I thought was kind of amusing. Now, he also has this weird quirk of how he holds a wine glass. He holds it right by the bottom every single time. And as a result of that, I will exclusively hold wine glasses by the base because I think it's so hilarious. Now, while this fluorine bridges these two carbons, I'm probably burning my own bridges talking about this. But hey, it's all for you, YouTube. So Lectica made this molecule. And this molecule is pretty cheeky because this alkyl fluoride, which is this fluorine here, it's still F minus, even though it's drawn as F plus. It's just drawn as F plus to trigger people. This is generated right next to a carbocation. And so this fluoride is an F minus. And what it does is it pops between two carbocations. A normal CF is a fairly covalent bond. But for this one, it pops right between the two carbons. And so it basically just plays hot potato, forming a crystal structure where we have this fluorine equidistant between two carbocations. Now, he decided to refer to it as fluoronium for the hype, and this really triggers old fluorine chemists super duper bad. And it was really funny to hear some dialogue between them at some fluorine conferences, such as the one in Oxford a few years ago, because these older fluorine chemists get really vocal and offended and will just interrupt his talks to just tell him off about how it's not a fluoronium. So this is quite polarizing in the fluorine community, although it's not polarized between the two carbons. It's equidistant. Lectica's illegal fluoronium is a very cursed molecule. This is another one that would belong right in S tier if we had any room. Last but not least, we have 147-trimethyloxatriquinane. This chemical is an oxonium, which is where you have an O with a positive charge. If you haven't seen oxoniums before, there's a few different ones that are common, like trimethyloxonium, triethyloxonium. But here's a weird one where we have three tertiary centers all bound to an oxygen. Now, the cool thing about this chemical is they're actually able to do an SN2 reaction at a tertiary center, which is something that will blow your mind if you're in organic chemistry. This chemical is pretty cursed. Just look at this. This is like a weird bowl with an oxygen holding it all together. This is another A tier chemical. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. If you're not a true fan, you can leave the video now and have a nice day. But for the remaining people who are the real true fans, I'm still looking for more submissions for your favorite moments from the channel since its creation earlier this year.
The channel's just about to hit 100,000 subscribers, and I'm planning to release a video with some of the best highlights from the channel over the past year. If you want to leave some suggestions in the comments of this video or on the community post I did or in the Discord, I'm cool with any of those. Just send the links with a timestamp, and hopefully we can show everyone some of the best moments that this channel has had. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.